welcome to the Dojo Talk Podcast. Please remove them shoes before entry. Set Master is here, and you still have not taken off your shoes. Every day to define man's mission yeah. Look into the sky for divine transmission yeah. Deaf man's vision makes the blind man listen yeah. Eyes on the prize, this is blind ambition Thank you blind ambition. Welcome to episode 12 of the Dojo Talk Podcast I'm your host, Serial Sensei I'm here with my co-host, Antaku We're both enjoying the, the, the elements of the, oh, the coast right now What's going on, man? I don't know. Just being pelted to death by small bits of ice. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, y'all y'all got the the brunt of it. We got the I don't know what we got. We got bluff. I consider this a disappointment, but I didn't go to work anyway, so I guess I can't complain too much. Um So we got a little 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 bit of fights to to talk about. Uh this past weekend we had UFC Fight Night one oh six. Belfort versus Gastelum, which took place in a very hot 92 degree arena in Brazil. Fortaleza. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're gonna run through this uh this card. Well, Probably get. Well, okay. well, hey, at least it wasn't like three o'clock in the morning again. I think they were like on time, actually. <sighs> kind of, but this card still. I said this the other podcast. These six fight, man, we gotta stop. We just. <laughs> like at least run them like an hour earlier right? yeah like i literally i think i started because the the i think the facebook prelim started at seven so i was watching fights from seven until roughly 11 o'clock and then i tuned out to watch samurai jack and then i tuned back in for like the last two fights so this was like hey like, it's like four hours probably more my math is off but it was a lot it's, like and it's normally longer because they fucking go till one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, but yeah, that's that's got to stop. We we got there's a better way. Let's let's stick to four and five. But I, I guess just I don't know. stick an extra fight on the freaking stick two extra fights from the prelims on the fight pass thing. Let us yeah, get because, our money's worth for the people who are paying for it. Yeah, because. The fight pass prelims are always like one, two fights anyway. Just or extra one or two. I mean, they try for four, but like somebody always ends up missing weight. Someone always <laughs> ends up freaking tearing their groin or something. Oh boy. Someone always has visa issues. Yeah, that that might be um that 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 problem might not go away. No. Nope. <laughs> that's, that's another story though. But, uh, all right, we'll just, uh, get this card rolling. Uh, main event, not, not too much to talk about. The fight didn't last extremely long, but, uh. I disagree, disagree. We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> I feel like I didn't, I didn't get a lot. Well, let's, let's talk about how Vitor knew he was going to lose this fight <laughs> from the outset. <laughs> so, Kelvin Gaslam and Vitor, uh. Our headliners, um, this fight, I guess I can say it pretty much went the way I thought it would go, except that it la- it went out of the first round. I thought it would have ended in the first, but... Um, it did, didn't it? Am no, I they, crazy? They went into this... Did they? That was the first round. Really? Okay, <laughs> all right, it didn't. I thought it lasted like a part of the second. All right, so it did go the way I went then. Um, I'll say for Vitor, not much to say on his end. But I don't think he looked terrible no. he's obviously not the vitor of of old but i mean he did land a few shots early in the fight but he did like he it, he didn't look like the vitor of old he didn't look like the new old vitor <laughs> like he, trt tour like let the man juice damn it <laughs> <laughs> I like mean, he's old. He's been fighting for twenty years. <laughs> he's he's <earned> the right. <laughs> he, he's like he's like your racist grandpa. Like you can't change him. <laughs> Enjoy him while he's. <laughs> I mean, he did land like 
he he landed a good shot in the beginning that I think like woke Gastelum up a little bit, and then he uh, went for his little spin in the. Uh, he tried that spin and back kick. He tried it. It didn't work, but it, he he tried it. But and, and then he was tired. Yeah, and then uh, wait, um, for Vitor, he like leading to this fight, he was very big on the idea of I want a Legends League, so I don't have to fight all these young people <laughs> because it's becoming. Uh, very clear that he can't beat anyone who's under 40. Or or I should say he can't beat most people who they will match him up with under 40. Like, I'm sure he could beat, um, I don't know, with someone under 40 who's, like, not shop-worn at this point and middleweight. Tim Bosch. Like, well, he might be able to beat Tim Bosch. I mean, I'd pick him. But, I don't know. Yeah, uh, let's let's go with Uriah Hall. Like <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see that fight. <laughs> Cause I know your like, Uriah is gonna hurt me. Uh, does does Vitor Belfort want to fight Uriah Hall? Like does he want to fight Robert Whittaker? <laughs> like, no, he wants to fight the more Dan Hendersons and maybe not Anderson Silva, but like oh maybe he'll drag Rich Franklin out for that one fight he has left on his contract. <laughs> Well, see, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I didn't know he only had one fight left, so I guess that's like Vitor. I, I get Vitor's a politicker. He always has been. Like he is MMA's resident politician. He, he's good at just finessing his way into things, but he's not gonna get his way this time. And if he really, if he really, if he really has, send off. like they'll, they'll give him somebody old for Brazil if they want him to fight on that card anyway. And they probably should because, like, it's the 212 card he wants on, I think. And, um, I, well, I love the main event of that card. Like, it's my second favorite fight this year scheduled. Uh, it's going to need help to sell. Like, I, I, I'm i assuming they're going to put Anderson Silva on this card. Maybe match them up again. I don't know. I mean, I say he'll... he'll... Yeah, they'll give him a good, decent uh, send off. But I guess when Gastelum's in, um, undefeated at one, yeah, at one eighty five. Um, yeah, kind of yeah, good. man. He's three zero, three zero in the UFC. He brings the the speed up there. I like that he does, and he did it in this fight. Like, he doesn't just throw like one or two. Like he'll he'll throw a one two, and then he'll follow it with like a three four five, and that's. He rocked Vitor twice, I think. Like, the first time he rocked him... Yep. No, first he, I dropped him. Yeah, he dropped him. And that one was like a... I can't remember. That, that was like a 1-2, and then he followed it up with, like, another combination, and he he dropped him. And then he went for ground and pound, Vitor. He hung in there for a little bit. Eventually, they got back on the feet, and I think he caught him with a right-left, followed by another right-left. <laughs> yeah. The last, that last left just came in so fast. And that's what Gaston brings that to this division. Like he is super fast, despite like looking like um just round, I guess. Yeah. Like he is quick. He's not particularly weak. Like he showed that against Kennedy. He can't like he can't be pushed around. But Kennedy's probably one of the stronger guys in the division. Yeah. He's, he's not. Like, and like he bring and he hits hard. Make no mistake about it. He can knock. Um, Middleweight's out, especially you know now that Chris Weidman and uh, Luke Rockhold have had their chins t- uh, touched a whole bunch in recent times. <laughs> like, I I'd pick Gaston over Michael Bisbing. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, not really much else to talk about as far as fight wise. He just kind of knocked Vitor out, but like I, I will if, say though, um, though we all expected him to beat, most people expected him to beat Vitor. I think two good things came of this. He took Vitor's power, which is important because Gaslam, um, slow starter, and um, he he is well. He well, I don't think he's as undersized as people make. Like, obviously, he has a height and reach disparity with most of the division, but he is, I, he's muscle bound a bit. But um, he took his power, and he beat Vitor in the 
time where Vitor is the most dangerous and his most dangerous position on the feet. All right. He didn't take him down and you know, ground and pound him out like Chris Weidman did. He didn't wait to he didn't drag him in deep into the fight and then finish him there. He beat him in the first round, first four minutes where he's the most dangerous and did where Vitor stood the best chance of winning. So uh, that's that's something to take away from this fight. And I think he's still talking about potentially going back down to 170, but... No. Stop. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I think... Like, I, I was, yeah, just stay at 185. Just... If the weight cut kills you, like, uh, like I, I get that like the top of this division is scary, but, like, Rockhold is no uh, MIA at the moment. Weidman needs... Uh, uh, at what point are we just going to consider Weidman just, like, worn goods, you know? Like, he... His 2016 consisted of him getting the shit beat out of him by Luke Rockhold. <laughs> a neck injury, coming back from that neck injury on five weeks, like, like after five weeks, and getting the crap beat out of him, of, out of him by Yoel Romero. Like, yeah, and if Gegger really puts it on, um, puts it on him at, what was it, like 211, 210? Yeah, that's going to be an interesting fight. 210. That's going to be interesting. It, like if Gegger puts it on at two ten and he wins that fight, it's going to be violently, you know. Yeah. So I was gonna, that that fight's going to change somebody's <clears throat> career path. Somebody's yeah. going to go up, and somebody's going to just remain stagnant. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I get the uh, I, I don't get the incentive to try and cut, kill yourself to get back to one uh, one seventy. And to be honest, like after seeing his fights at middleweight, yeah, I don't think the size is. I mean. Obviously, like a rock hole, even though he's MIA, like you fight a dude that big, that could be an issue. But he makes up for it. His speed, he's going to be faster than everybody. He can still knock people out. He still has a good, well-rounded skill set. Yeah, and it's not like uh, rock hole has like, like guys like rock hole have like the best chin, I guess. Right. So uh, that's another thing he's going for him into that fight. And then you have guys like Yoro Romero and... um. Jack Ray, who are kind of like him, except, you know, a little bit more muscly. Yeah. I think those are the... Yeah, those are the only two people who I look at in, like, the top of the division that I'm like, those might be... Those will be some tough outs. Like, yeah. I don't... Yeah, <clears throat> those those guys, you might... Stay away. <laughs> it might not be good for you. But everybody else... Yeah, yeah he's a big game, man. Yeah, everybody else is fair game. This whole so, division is cannibalizing itself while Michael Bisping fights old men and <laughs> welterweights. So for and for, Anderson Silva again when that happens because it's gonna happen. Uh, I don't know. I I think Anderson, I think Anderson and GSP will somehow happen first. I don't know. We'll uh, we'll see. With, with this the way this year matchups been going, you never know what's. Never know but, what's gonna happen. But, like we say, and we say that, but like we have cards like this where they're matched so well, top to bottom, and then all like then you get like a Artem Lobov versus Cub Swanson. <laughs> yeah. So for mm. Vitor, who's if if you could pick anybody, last, last victory, his last send off, uh, who who do we get? And they don't even have to be in like in the UFC, even if they grab somebody out of retirement or or anything. Who does Vitor want? Like. Like strap. My question: Who does Vitor want to fight? I was gonna say because he didn't. He didn't want the Anderson Silva rematch. Like they tried to book that last year for Brazil, and they both turned it down. And I thought that was a good fight for him. Um, if they could get Rick Franklin, maybe him. Like uh, the way I see it, Vitor is gonna want somebody like with a name who. Like like a Dan Henderson type with a name who has some type of value, like with a name that has some type of value to his resume and his pocketbook, but who is fragile enough for him, where where they're past it and he can actually like get them out of there in the first round. See him in Vandalay. Maybe. No. Um... Oh, is he still like banned or did that? I think he's still banned until like 2018. Oh, oh good. All right. All right, so that problem. I mean, it could still happen, even though I feel like we. I don't know if he'll wait that long, but. Um, Rampage still has two fights left on his Bellator deal, I think. 
Um, like, there's not a lot of options out there. Like, does he want to fight Shogun? Like, Shogun, mm, Mishida's gone for a while because the stupid test thing. Um, I don't know what really options he has left. Now maybe he wants Connor. <laughs> <laughs> don't put that in the air they'll somehow figure out a way to like legitimize that fight yeah. I mean Connor's fought well to wait Gaslam's fought well to wait <laughs> Gaslam knocked out Vitor <laughs> Belfort <laughs> oh I couldn't imagine if Connor knocked out Vitor in Brazil right. I don't even want to think about that be riots in the street <laughs> but uh yeah i guess that's that's about it for the main event it, one round gastelum he's been on the roll man he's he's taking souls at 185 it's, it's not a game uh, no, hopefully, he, he is a problem yeah he's a problem he's definitely a problem mm. um so definitely interested to see who they match him up with and we'll keep an eye on vitor see who uh See Give him the winner guy. of um, Gaslam, winner, Weidman, Masasi. There we go. Yeah, pretty much. You might as well just start throwing him in there and make him a fresh new face to the division. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> our co-main event uh, features a uh, top five dead or alive lightweight of the world, yeah. <laughs> Shogun Hua. They have your name. <laughs> well, technically he's ranked number six, but since Bader is no longer in the UFC, we just call him top five. Man. Yep, top, top five. five. Lay heavyweight. Versus uh, John Volante. Is it pronounced John or Gian? John. Okay, yeah, I thought they pronounced it John. Okay, so uh, so, so I have this a fight. Yep. So why do like all these dudes who come in from like uh, who come in as prospects at like uh, two hundred five? Why do they all have metal rods shoved up their like shoved up their asses? Because like they all they, like they all look so fucking stiff. <laughs> like Misha Serkinov, um, Corey Anderson, John Volante. <laughs> <laughs> like they look like if they tried to bend over, their like spine would snap and so like too. Hey man, that's that's the two hundred five division, and this this is the state of two hundred five we're in. Right, the, the pickings are slim. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get any semi-athletic person you can get. Like, but John Volante was like tapped to play football, like professional football. Like he got invited. To, like, if I'm not mistaken, he got invited to go work out with the Giants and the Eagles. Uh, and he joined. Oh yeah, you know, they did. He's like, that. no, I, no, I want to go fight. Uh, I want to go make you know twenty thousand dollars to go fight guys who have three times the experience than me and get punched in the face. <laughs> Well, I mean, at least this was a, a entertaining fight. No, no, basically. It was really fun. Yeah, uh, rock 'em sock 'em robots for three rounds is pretty much the way to describe this. Um, Shogun has definitely lost a step. I'll say not not as fast, not as uh maybe precise, but he's still yeah. he's still Shogun. <laughs> yeah. Um. This fight like yeah, for. If you're a Shogun fan, like, this fight is really heartening. Because he gets, like, besides, like, Rumble, who's a better counterpuncher at 205 than Shogun right now? Yeah, that counter was there all night. But, like, like, seriously, think about it. Who is a better counterpuncher besides Anthony Rumble Johnson at 205 than Shogun right now? Nobody. Yeah, but I say not even the champ because he's not even a counter puncher. No, he's not. Like Manu- Manua knocks people out, but he's not a counter puncher. <laughs> he's more aggressive. And... Yeah. But Shogun physically is, you know, he's way past it. We all know that. But like the technique will carry him to victories over the John Volantes and Corey Andersons and um, Patrick Cummings of the world, I guess. Yeah, and I think even John's. I think I'm pretty sure his corner mentioned like that counter, Head and I don't know. I guess he just couldn't adjust. Or I don't know, but yeah, that Shogun's counter was there all night. Like he just over and over and over again. And he got hurt early, and then he just figured out uh, all I have to do is be technical with this dude because he's just gonna keep throwing jabs, 
and I'm gonna counter him every single time, and eventually I'll get the finish. Yeah, and and that's the I thing felt... he has over, and, and the, I guess it's the thing he still has over ninety five percent of the vision. The problem is, it's eventually going to lead him to somebody who's going to seriously hurt him. Right, because <laughs> there were moments in this fight, like I I felt semi comfortable saying that I was sure he was gonna win. But he still had a couple of moments where he ate some hits and yeah, and it, yeah, like, like, it looked like he was on like yeah, it, it looked like he had just been woken up, I guess. Yeah, the the upset was the upset was there, but and that's just the that, that's just the uh, like fragility of somebody who's been fighting for so long and been in so many wars and had what two major knee surgeries. Yeah, and like you're, that's what you're gonna end up with, and. Um, but he's still, he's still he is more super he's more technical a fighter now than he was when he was just like rampaging through dudes at least as a striker because I think coming to the U uh, I never got really into it but I think coming to the USC really screwed up his wrestling game because he was uh, in pride so much of what he did was just based on like taking guys down and like beating them up from the top but um I think he's really grown as a striker, or at least relied more on his fundamentals. Yeah, and it it, it works. Yeah, his and... shot his shot selection was on point. He always put himself in a good position to counter. He always, and when he smelt blood, he never got um over aggressive. So, that's him. interesting because he, he's now on a three fight win streak. He, he is now the like what the number four, number five way heavyweight on the planet because right. Brian, Brian Baker's gone. Like, uh, yeah. I don't want to see freaking Shogun versus Rumble. This is depressing. <laughs> hey, Glover couldn't take a punch from Rumble. Do do either? Do you think Shogun can? <laughs> Counter puncher prevails <laughs> if he doesn't get his head taken off. No, I wouldn't want to see that fight though. That would probably be actually be pretty hard to watch. Yeah, and I'm not even like I'm not a huge like Shogun fan, but and that's pretty telling that the number five guy in your division, when you match him up with the number two guy in the division, it's just an out and out mismatch. Right, and that's where my <laughs> heavyweight is right now. Hey man, uh, Jimmy Manua, Corey Anderson. I mean, one oh, of hopefully. The... One of those guys got beat by Shogun. <laughs> and the other one got beat by Rumble. Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, at least Anderson's fight was competitive. Yeah, um, I thought Anderson won. No, I... I don't remember that. Yeah, I remember well, that fight. Shogun, being went off, yeah. Shogun went off the, um, the strength of two left hooks at the end of like the first and third or first and second round. And they knocked um, Anderson down, but Anderson had control the fight uh, the round prior to both knockdowns like I'm not mad about it but somehow this is all Dave Branch's fault he won't fight a 205 like a like a good human being would right (laughs) he he, oh god it's the superhero we all needed and he's Mm. took his cape off but he took his cape off with the glasses on (laughs) yeah I want to be a normal man right I want to cut weight jerk (laughs) <laughs> but nevertheless, I mean, good, good win for Shogun. Good, good war, man. Good, nice, bloody, entertaining, rock'em sock'em fight. Just he let Shogun got... fight inexperienced strikers for the rest of his career, please. Yeah, man. I mean, he still there's a little bit left in the tank. It's not completely drained. There's a little bit left. It's probably I think he's 35 now. Yeah. So yeah, the end's gotta be near, man. This dude's been in some wars. He's been fighting for a long, long time. So I gotta imagine he can't have too many, too many of those kind of fights I mean, left in him. But but on the, at the other end, Shogun seems like the type of person who go out and fight for like another ten years. So right. I hope I don't, I don't, I don't want to see the man get get killed in there. But hey, three fight win streak, top five dead alive at two oh five. Keep doing what you're doing. It's obviously working. Um, the next fight, which I rewatched this morning, uh, <laughs> Edson Barboza and Benil Dariush. Um, Poor Benil Dariush. Oh, man, because he this was a, so well. So he did. Smart. He did. This reminded me. This was like a flashback of um, 
kind of of the Bechtick and uh, Elkins fight where Darius was... I mean, it wasn't like I don't think it was a a, a blowout. You, like, you, you know what this you, reminds me of? The Ferguson Barbosa fight. <laughs> it was. He used the same like technique. He did the same thing, and it worked for most ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, like most, most of, of the, the first I mean, round, and then things just started inching towards Barbosa's way. Yeah. Like, he kept the pressure on in the first, and Barboza just couldn't really get his feet set. He was kind of like, he was getting a little bit off, but you could tell he's a little uncomfortable. And then the second, he got off a little more, but I still thought Darius was in control, but you could tell the gap was a closing a little bit. Yeah. And, and then he was dead. Right. And <laughs> it was crazy because, so I was streaming this fight, and... When Darius threw his last right, and, like, my stream froze, like, a second after he threw his right, and then I saw him, like, his body was inching down, like he was going for a takedown. Yeah. And in that freeze frame, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. It's, I saw it. Like, the vision was there. And then my stream, my little circle was spinning. <laughs> when the circle stopped spinning, he was laid out on the floor. And I was like, oh, I know what happened. And then, yeah, the replay, the... Uh, Sagat Tiger knee, right, flush, right. <laughs> flush to the chin. The the craziest part about that is uh, he wasn't um, Barboza wasn't even like centered on him, like he was turning in the air as he threw the knee. <laughs> but, oh, man. like well, that was probably his own uh, only mistake of the fight, where he just shot the jab out there. And then, like he, then he took took a step to the outside and ducked his head under and everything like that. Like, <sighs> yeah, that was. I mean, Darius you showed how good he is. It just didn't get the. Darius is a smart dude, but athletically, like Barboza might be the best straight up athlete at one fifty five. Yeah, at one fifty five. I'm, I'm looking at the timing is fucking ridiculous. I think, man, Barboza, he has, like, championship potential. I, I don't know if he'll ever get the strap. If he got but, to fight Connor, I think he'd beat him. Yeah, I'm looking at his record. So, after the Ferguson loss, he goes on. He demolished Pettis. He demolished he Gilbert. destroyed Gilbert. <laughs> and then Darius, I mean, it was a tough fight until he landed that knee, and he just shut everything down yeah like i'm i mean I, I, title shots aren't guaranteed the way they do matchups especially with connor around you kind of never know what's going to go on because he's such a wild card but i i gotta think he's not too far away from like at least a title contender fight now because his last three fights have all been just crazy impressive barboza feels like he should be a bigger deal than he is like hype wise that just shows you how freaking crazy this lightweight division is yeah they're like it's killers everywhere just yeah <laughs> Darius is a damn good fighter but and to go on a three fight win streak in a division of like killers like that I mean so he's currently ranked five. Dos Anjos is no longer a lightweight, so I guess technically that puts him at four. Yeah. So that would leave the only two people ahead of him being Alvarez and Fer. Oh, three people would be Alvarez, Ferguson, and Khabib, and I guess obviously Connor. So that makes four. I doubt he's gonna fight uh, uh, Eddie Alvarez. Cause don't they I, they train together, right? They have the same striking coach. I'm not sure if they okay. train together, but like. They are, they're, both they're, out of, they're both out of Jersey, right? Or Philly? Yeah, Mark Henry's boys. Um, yeah. But, dude, fucking get, just give Tony Ferguson a title shot. Like, try and make that fight and then give give us could be Barbosa and I'll be happy. Barbosa. Yeah. Because, yeah, I think at this point he's, he's earned some stripes, man. He's... The what? When he first like got around in the UFC I always thought like dude this dude's crazy talented mm -hmm. but his chin <laughs> his chin seemed a little questionable 
there are a couple fights I think that he could have won that he didn't win. Hey, remember when the... people were talking about him like after the Njaquani and Pearson fights, and they're like, "Oh, he lost both fights. Oh, he's overrated." And he got the spinning wheel kick, and everybody was like, "Oh, he was like even with Terry Adam in that fight." <laughs> but it just like... shows you, being a striker, it takes a long ass time to get good. Yeah. And I think people forget, like, I know he lost that Cerrone fight, mm -hmm. but don't mistake, he was giving Cerrone the work up until he caught that jab that kind of ended it, and then he got choked out, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, like, that's why I say, like, he, the championship potential's there. I, I don't know if he'll reach the top, but I, he deserves at least a shot. He, he's got to get a shot. Like, the Johnson, just thinking about the Johnson and Ferguson fights, it took pathological pressure. <laughs> like, uh, from Tony Ferguson, probably the most well-conditioned fighter in the in MMA, besides maybe Joanna <laughs> Jacek, and Michael Johnson, like having the fight of his life, and just fighting against type and just coming forward constantly. And he still got hurt, if I remember. Yeah. He got dropped, and it took that to beat Barboza. Right. He is so it good. Yeah, and I, I do want to see, I would love to see him and Connor, only because, yeah, like the key to beat Barboza is you got to put pressure. You can't let him get his offense off. But Connor's not a pressure fighter. Uh, in the way he is, in the way he is, and like he's a pressure counter fighter where he will walk you down and get you to commit on a right hand. Right. Like he did against Alvarez, which is probably like the best example of fighting a smaller right handed fighter. But. Yeah. But um, that, um, well, yeah, I think he beats Connor. Fuck, he was the beating, only. He was beating Ferguson before, Fer, like before Ferguson just cracked him with like just straight up willpower. Yeah, see, that, that's the thing of, that scares me about him and Connor. Like, I I feel like that fight could almost go like this, where like he'll batter Connor for a while, but like he'll get caught with that left, <laughs> and that might be all she wrote. Yeah, but. I can say though in this fight though he ate he ate some good shots. Mm -hmm. Not that Darius is like a knockout artist. I mean he's knocked people out before, but he yeah. ate some good shots and he didn't really get like wobbled or panicked or anything like that. So I, I think I think a large, that's a large part of it. Like, he's been a guy who's kind of just mentally checked. I, mean, I would say broken, but like you can see the insecurity when it especially when it comes to his boxing. Yeah, I think Henry's done a good job of like reining that in. Yeah, and these last three fights have have showed it. So, mm -hmm. hey man, Barbo Barboza for a title shot. Hey, or, title I'm, I'm title shot. It. Just something yeah. fun, God. Right. Let's do something while this belt is in limbo. <laughs> a kind of no... busy fighting Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. Oh God. That... I hope that doesn't really happen. I don't, you know, I don't even want to talk about that. That's another. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna open up a whole another can of worms, and I just don't, I don't want to see that fight at all. I will say, I, I mean, if if it had, it, uh, hey, it would be the most MMA thing of all time. <laughs> it, it goes back to this, this freaking sports roots, where just like I'm going to go fight this guy who's better at this thing than me. <laughs> that is true. In his sport. <laughs> that is true I mean yeah if it happens I'll watch just off principle I have to but Kid Yamamoto knocked out Masato I'm just saying oh, I love Kid oh man shout out to Kid he, he turned... <laughs> shout out to Kid he turned 40 like the other man, week or he's something now like old that. man Yamamoto so yeah man I love that guy but uh yeah so Barboza man keep doing your thing uh, Derry, you still a guy to keep tabs on. Like I said, he was he was doing good like ninety nine point nine percent of that fight up until the knee. And I mean, if anybody eats a knee like that, it's probably not gonna go too well for you. But yeah, still still worth keeping an eye on. Um, I guess uh, next fight on the list, which I also rewatched this morning, uh, Ray Borg and Husier de Silva. Um, I'm always happy to see a Ray Borg fight. I completely uh, forgot that was Jusir's real name. <laughs> I did too, because when I googled it, I put in a, 
Oh, no, I put in the silver, and Formiga kept popping up. And I was like, what is Formiga? And I was like, oh, they're the same. It's like how, yeah, Hen- it's like, it's like how Burrell isn't really Henan Burrell's last name. Right. But this fight was, um, it was really close. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. A lot of, uh, a lot of grappling. <laughs> and I was actually thinking, because they kept mentioning during the, the fight that, you know, how hot the arena was, like, 92 degrees. I'm like, dude, these dudes must have been just about to die from heat because there was just so much grappling and movement and just... <laughs> yeah, they were getting after each other. <sighs> I think, if I remember correctly, maybe I might be thinking of another fight. I'm trying to think of how I scored this. I think I gave it to Borg. I think he definitively won the third... I might be thinking of another fight. Like this is the type of fight you, um, you could make an argument for thirty twenty seven, I guess, for for Mega. Like if you really tried. And like if somebody has scored the fight, if they've scored the fight for for Mega, like I wouldn't have had anything against it. Right. Like Borg had the definitive best offense in the fight, and at the end of the third round, when he was just laying elbows and elbows and elbows Both, into yeah. for Mega. And he bloodied him up a little bit. Yeah. yeah, they were pretty even, like, in this fight. Like, they, they were almost like mirror images of each other. I think after the second round, they were talking about, like, oh, they landed 45 strikes each. <laughs> yeah, because the, the, pretty much the whole fight was, like, they they would engage, they would do a few strikes, eventually somehow they would end up clinching, mm-hmm. and then grappling. And it was just it was just repeat of those three things over and over and over until, yeah, like, around the end when Borg kind of definitively started to take over with the ground and pound, but that was right around the fight was about to end. But I guess he, the judges saw it his way. He squeaked out another win. Um, I believe reading, he said that uh, he would like to fight Mighty Mouse next. As I figure everybody in 125 does at this point. But Dude, Mighty Mouse fights in like, what, three, four weeks? Like, yeah, let him get the next title shot. Like, um, everybody else would be for me, got to. All right. <laughs> And, I mean, Formiga was ranked... Number he three. Was third. Number yep. three. And Borg was five, so... Number eight. Eight. Oh, all right, so... Yeah, I mean, at this point at 125, we can't really be picky with who we give title shots to. But I was thinking, uh, assuming... Assuming that Mighty Mouse beats uh, Wilson Hayes and hey. that fight is... Uh, was that next month or May? April? April. April, April Fox card, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, assuming Mighty Mouse wins that fight, um, do we think Borg has anything for, for Mighty Mouse, or he's young and he's explosive and he is a tr- for a tremendous scrambler? I'm not sure he has anything. Like, I'm not sure he has what it takes to beat Mighty Mouse in a five round fight. Like. I th- I think he can manage to at least make it scrappy. Yeah. yeah he might be able to w- win two rounds off of the yeah. other fight. Because yeah. he's just an insane athlete, and he's really good at what he's good at. Yeah, and he pushes a pace that's just... And maybe and maybe that fight, lights, like maybe getting a title fight lights a fire under his ass and his striking, which has improved. But which is, I think we undersell how much his striking has gotten better in a year. Because literally... 13 months ago, it was non-existent. Right, he was basically just strictly a grappler. He was strictly a grappler, <laughs> and he got exposed against Justin Scoggins, where he looked terrible on the feet. Like, I think... He, dude, he must have been averaging something like f- 4 minutes and 30 seconds a round of, like, top control prior to the Scoggins fight. Like he showed off a little bit more in like the smoke of fight with the striking, but like here, uh, he he didn't become like a top level striker, but he showed that he's learning and he's learning how to sit on his punches and move his head and all that good stuff. Yeah, he's competent. And he was putting, yeah, he was putting punches together, was sticking and moving, and it's getting, it, it, just seeing the growth in 13 months is just so amazing. Yeah, and it's good to hear that he's with um. Mike Jackson camp and he's with Gibson who's a tremendous striking coach and sucks that his old team is apparently suing him yeah, I really? don't, yeah the, the um the no host bar team that like is the opposite is the rival the local rival gym for Jackson's in Albuquerque 
I have no idea why. Yeah, I was gonna say why. Why are we suing Ray Borg? I, I don't know if they're like a manager. <laughs> it's a managerial thing, or um, they Borg didn't pay them, or something like that. But yeah, it is what it is, I he'll, guess. Yeah, he'll he'll get out of that. But okay. yeah, man, Borg's a he's a dude to keep an eye on, man. Yeah, ever since he's come over to the UFC, he's been putting in work and never a boring yeah. fight. Never born fight. Like he makes grappling look really exciting. <laughs> he makes grappling look really fun. But yeah, man, Ray Borg, he's he's that guy to, to keep an eye on. Um, Only twenty three years old. Word. So even if he loses to Mighty Mouse, if that fight happens, he but could conceivably get another title shot within the, like a if, year. If the UFC doesn't disband the division, yes. <laughs> Like, look what happened when freaking Henry Cejudo lost um, Demetrius. Man. He came back and he beat the shit out of Joseph Benavides. Like, he he went back and he went back and got better. Like, these what guys card are really that? young and they're just going to get better. What like, card was that? The tough whatever number finale. What was the main event? That was the Elliot Johnson card. Oh, my. I never watched that fight. Really? Yeah, I missed that card. I think. Like, so who because I, I didn't the fight. Like that's that's how good he looked. Oh man, I gotta go back and watch that. Yeah, I never. Cause yeah, I missed that card. I heard about how the the Mighty Mouse fight went. But yeah, I think I don't know if I worked or yeah, yeah was, something happened. And I, I missed night. that card. Yeah, I probably was working then. So yeah, I think I, I need to go back and watch that then. Yeah, I heard that that him and um him and Benavidez had like a little controversy. I just for some I should have watched it because I was really like hyped for that fight. I but. think he hit him twice in the groin. Like in the first round, and it was a round he was clearly winning. Like I think he knocked Benavides down, and um, it, 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 I don't want to say it cost him the fight, but it probably cost him the fight. I think, right. but he looked great. Right. I'll have to go back and and check that out. So I mean, it's good that one twenty five does have some few. You know, there's talent there. It's just Mighty Mouse seems to be so <laughs> he's he's so far ahead of everybody else that it's. It's out of control. We miss you, Kyoji Horiguchi. Word. <laughs> I hope you go to Ryzen and just knock heads off. Just... Uh, I hope you go to Ryzen and make a shit ton of money. And just I'm pretty wave sure it around will. in Demetrius Johnson's face. <laughs> they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna love him over there. Oh my he, god, he's gonna start knocking dudes out again. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna take some souls. But yeah, shout outs to Ray Borg. Good fight, great showing. Um. This next fight uh, on the card. Uh, shout out to Juicy oh. Formiga, by the way, because she was just as much in this fight as um, Borg. Yeah, yeah. It's it probably was... his more, this is probably his funnest fight in the UFC. Yeah, this was a razor close fight. Yeah, you you could have argued for for either of them, and he hasn't fought Mighty Mouse yet, right? Uh, he's like, no, he probably should. Yeah, yeah. He's one of the few like top guys, and he's been ranked like that high for a long time, and somehow they've never. At one point, he was the number one flyweight on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow they never crossed paths. Like, yeah, I don't get that. His four losses before this were Joseph Benavides, John Dodson, Henry Cejudo, and Ian McCall. They just don't want to give him a title fight. Yeah. But, hey, matchmaking, we've talked about it forever. It's, that's, that's another <laughs> that's another issue. He, he'll stick around that top five, though. But um, He's a talented back taker. He is. Uh, this next next fight on the card, uh, the only I think this is pretty much yeah this is the only women's fight on the on the card. Uh, Marion Renault and Betch Cohea. Another fight that I thought was pretty close up until that third round where Renault just <laughs> head kick just changed the whole course of the fight and that last round was definitely a ten eight. Yeah. And I and I don't give out ten eights easily that was that last round was easily a 10-8 like she she head kicked her like 30 seconds into a round and spent the rest of the round beating the crap out of her right yeah i mean props to bet for even surviving that onslaught because she she ate a lot of hits that last round yeah and somehow managed to to get to the end but i mean up until that up until that head kick the fight to me was pretty even i guess yeah, it was pretty much uh they, yeah, they. I feel like they were canceling each other out. Like nobody was really, 
Nobody gained too much of an advantage, though I'll say Betch got more takedowns. So. Yeah, that's why I, I, I was giving her the edge heading into that third round. Yeah. But I, so. I could have saw, saw the first round for um, Renault. Yeah, because the first round, really, they neither one of them did too much. So, yeah, you kind of that was kind of a toss-up. Mm-hmm. Round round two probably would go to Betch because of the takedowns. Um, it seemed like for a second I thought Renault was going to I don't say gas out, but it looked like she was kind of wearing out, and then she found like a second sale, and <laughs> yeah, she she managed to to turn it on. It mm-hmm. was a pretty, it was a fun, it was a fun fight. Um, I guess I I'm not gonna argue that it was scored a draw. Um, like this is what's gonna happen as we move forward with the more like with the more liberal ten eights, right. But. And yeah, I mean, yeah, this was one of those fights where, to be honest, I feel like no matter what this fight was scored, it would have been fine. I don't. Yeah, it would have been fine because you could argue that Betch won the first two. You could argue, or you could argue that Renault might have ecked out the first and definitely took the third. Yeah. And the third was easily a ten-eight. Not Betch. I don't remember her literally landing much of anything. So. Well. Like this fight was really interesting to me because I'm, I'm uh, like my argument is Betch Kohea is an underrated fighter because well uh, it's a factor of a bunch of different things getting knocked out by Ronda Rousey after we all know Ronda's not a great technical fighter um her getting a title shot despite the fact like she beat Jessamine Duke and Shayna Baszler to do it <laughs> and um. Her, her walk running around talking about being this big power puncher, despite the fact that she has like what two knockouts to her name, and one was against Shayna Baszler, who is like physically disabled at that point. <laughs> and she's being held together by like duct tape and stuff. Like so, yeah, uh, we she's kind of considered a joke among like fans and stuff, but uh, like. Betch is not a bad fighter. Yeah, not a, not not in any stretch. She's not a bad fighter. This is what her fi- like, she's in her fifth year of like actual training for MMA, at all. Like she started boxing to lose weight in 2012, and six months later they were like, "Hey, you want to take a fight? Make some money on the side, and somehow right. she ended up in the UFC." Yeah, and I mean, she's a she's a for a woman who doesn't hit very hard. She's a very good striker. And uh, she did really good work of just, like, keeping a steady amount of pressure and punching with Mary Renault because I really think that took Renault off her, like, game in the first two rounds where, like, oh, this girl is throwing. I can't be throwing at the same time as her. I'm going to back off. And that really opened up. Um, uh, I think that's what I, why I edged the first two, outs, uh, two rounds for Betch. She's a strong, like, I'm, she's really like yeah, she's she seemed like, really like, like, she's she, she's physically strong. Like I don't think she's yeah. very athletic, but like she will be able to push most girls up against the cage for against like, the cage, yeah, easily for rounds at a time. So do you you think they should <laughs> should they run this back or should we maybe match them up against other? I, I wouldn't be mad at a rematch. If I, they I decided run it back. The yeah. division ain't going nowhere. Like, um, <laughs> right. Division these contenders, um, kind of out. Uh, it's not that there's not people for Nunes to fight, Nunes or Shevchenko to fight. It's not. There's not a lot of um exciting matchups, I guess. Like, Carmouche versus either one. Uh, Zingano versus either one. Well, Zingano Nunes could be. Has you know a little bit of beef there, I guess. Um, McMahon, uh, she's kind of changed things up, I guess. She seems more aggressive. It's not an exciting fight, but I wouldn't be mad at her fighting either girl. Raquel Pennington is the, the new fresh face in the title picture. Juliana Pena, arguably was winning, uh, was on her way to win, um, winning the second round in that Shevchenko fight. When people like to see that. Like there's, there are names, I guess I'm getting at. There, there are people for the fight, for the chance to fight. We, we don't need Betch and Marion fighting those women right now. Yeah, and I mean, if at all, 
you throw them back in a rematch, and at least you know, as long as it goes like the first fight, that you're gonna get a good quality, a good quality fight for the division. Yeah. So you'll bring eyes to other fighters not named, you know, Ronda, Holly, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You know, other faces that people have probably just been overlooking. Um, but yeah, good, good fight. Great last round for Renault. <laughs> I'll, head kicks are probably my I'm favorite strikes. I'm really surprised she didn't finish uh, Gretchen that round. Yeah, because that head kick, like, that head kick, and it happened, like, in real time, that head kick happened, like, really fast. Yeah. And, like, I I just, like, yeah, like, I just saw her leg kind of move, but I didn't really know what she did, and then Betts was just (laughs) stanky-legging, just, like, all around the cage, and then just Renault just unleashed the barrage of of punches, but, yeah, man, Betts, shout out to you, man, I don't... I don't think a lot of people will survive that. A lot of people probably go down uh, after that. So, yeah, I hope they, they do run that back. Probably not in the near future. I'd imagine both these, <laughs> both of them probably have some medical suspensions after that fight. But, yeah, good uh, good showing. And looking forward to them running that back. Hopefully they do. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, got one more fight uh, on the main card. Uh, a good old... Rematch, rematch between uh the other cowboy not named Cerrone, uh Alex cowboy. Oliveira. Right, the real <laughs> the real deal cowboy, Alex Oliveira and uh Tim Means. Alex man, he looks good at one seventy. I didn't realize like how big he seems like a big one seventy. Dude, he is massive. Yeah. Hey, He's a big dude, dude. Go back and watch him watch his fight with Will Brooks. He looks humongous in that. Yeah, place. and uh, not and to Will get Brooks off on a tangent. Huge. Yeah, and and not to go off on a tangent, but like I feel like a lot of people gave Will Brooks crap for that. I mean, I, I guess I get it. He came in the UFC with like a lot of hype, but I'm like, dude, did y'all not see Cowboy dwarf that man? <laughs> like well, uh, he came in like six, seven pounds overweight. But yeah, like but even still, uh, like, you know, he, he, obviously, fucking, he's huge. Yeah, it's, it's a big boy. And I think Means felt the pressure because this fight basically was a turned into a grapple fest. And in that second round, man, Cowboy just suplex City, just slam after slam after takedown. <laughs> I, th- I think he just... Kind- what a difference three months makes because back in December, Tim Means was literally tossing Alex Oliveira around the cage and like beating the crap out of him. Right. And, and this fight... Complete opposite. Yeah, like, it, just a reminder, Alex Oliveira has only been fighting since, like, December 2011. And he it's not like he was, like, doing much else before that in terms of, the like, combat sports. Um, but he took up Muay Thai when he was 22. He's 29 now. So, the, the point being, this is a dude who's still learning how to do martial arts like every facet of martial arts. So he's going to make big jumps between fights, but this was really unexpected. Yeah, and like and he's not even just big, he's athletic. Like he's strong and fast and like dex uh dexter oh, what's the word? Dexterity. Yeah, he has dexterity like he, he has all the like things that a good fighter needs to have. And he didn't even cuz means is known for you know, putting hands and knees and feet on people and means didn't he didn't let means get off anything yeah in this fight like it was just pressure grappling the entire fight and just wore him down up until the that last round where he got the um no, not the last round the second round yeah where he got the rear naked choke rear naked choke yeah i didn't i felt like cowboy just kind of came out of nowhere like but like he's like when we first got to the UFC, like people were talking about, oh, he's su-. like remember his fight with Burns, where he beat the oh, yeah, crap without... out of Burns yeah, for two <laughs> rounds Gilbert. before getting armbarred. Yeah, like this is a dude who athletically matches up well with anybody in the UFC. Like straight yeah. up baseline athleticism, he is a great athlete, and he's big. I'm looking at his record. I didn't realize he's been in the... Like, he's fought this many times already. No, dude, he's an iron horse. 
Uh, Gilbert Burns, KJ Noons, Joe Merritt, Bator Hallman, Cerrone, Montasseri, Brooks, and then Means twice. And that's only since 2015. He's only been in the UFC <laughs> for two years, and he's had how many fights? One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, he's working. nine fights. <laughs> he's working. <laughs> like, that's insane. He's only lost twice. Yeah. So, yeah, this dude kind of just came out, of nowhere. came out of nowhere, man. And just, yeah, he's, I don't. It's weird because when I watch him fight, like he doesn't have any one thing that makes me go, "Oh, you got to watch out for that." No, because like, like I said, he's coming to the sport like with basically no background. It's not even right. it's not even like Rory McDonald where he's been doing MMA since he was fourteen. He was like twenty two years old and decided just to pick this up. Right. So like, he but, doesn't have that one thing to fall back on, but if you're not a very good striker. He's going to outstrike you because he's so much faster and bigger than you. Right. If you're not a good wrestler or grappler, like Tim Means, he's, he's going to outgrapple you, you. He's going to wear you out because he can do that. Like I, I don't know what this means when he gets to the top 15 and these guys are like, oh, I'm a really good wrestler or, oh, I'm a really good striker. And, you know, he's going to take more than being really big and really strong and really fast to beat me. But for everybody else, that's an issue. He reminds me of like a Neil Magny, but more. He's like a Neil Magny, like 2.5. Yeah. <laughs> like a 3.0. Because Magny, yeah, Magny's like solid, but he's not the biggest dude or like not the most athletic. But Oliveira is a big dude and he's crazy athletic. It's just he. Magny and he just, Oliveira are testaments of what, like. A consistent fight schedule where you're constantly getting a paycheck and due to you, where you can just afford to be in the gym every day for like two years and get a fight every three the two to three months, and just build that experience. That's crazy. Non fights in two years. There's some people who like. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, keep Good. keep doing your thing, cowboy. You you're, you're on the the whatever path you're on. It's 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 doing good. It's yeah. it's done well for you. Exactly. <laughs> don't he's don't o- change. He's only twenty nine years old. Is he is he ranked? Or is he outside the top fifteen? Yeah, he's outside he's the outside. top fifteen, but um, I'm I'm guessing. Uh well, they already took him off. Never mind. I was gonna say they took off um what's his name, Hendrix. So at 15, we got Ponza Nibio, 14, Matt Brown, 13, Jake Ellenberger. Why is Ryan LaFleur on this list? <laughs> Safadine is still top 10. Uh, Seth got, Seth had his career robbed of him by injury. I, I but, think by the end of this year, the Cowboys are going to be on this list. Oh, he's yeah. definitely going to be on this list. Not yeah. even a question. Unless he slips up somewhere, yeah. Yeah, he's somebody in this this top, somebody in this like bottom ten, or from like ten to fifteen. They're they're losing their spot to him. He's going to take somebody's yeah. spot. Well, I think Uz- Uzman's going to freaking just skyrocket up the rankings this year. I mean, I feel like he could arguably probably be ten. Sat Safadine, man, he. Dude, I, t- I, t- I take Uzma in that fight in a heartbeat. Yeah, Sa- Safadine, oh, I love him. I love him as a fighter, but yeah, it just seemed like since the UFC jump, it's not all been... It's, it's the injuries. Yeah. Like, he used to be a solid enough athlete to where his low volume style would work because he could still pull the trigger, and he can't do that anymore. And he doesn't have any other way to implement his game. So for all his technique, he doesn't have the approach. He he doesn't have the physicality. It, oh God, sad. Because I did. Cause yeah. I think he'd be champion. Honest to God. Because how much of this division is based around um, just wrestlers who become real, like solid enough strikers 
to 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 outstrike other strikers with the wrestling. You you feel me? Like you're Johnny yeah, Hen- you're Johnny Hendricks and you're Tyron Woodley's. You know what I'm saying? Like technically speaking, I'm like the the Safadine that we saw in Strike Force, like that dude, yeah. That dude could be champ. That's yeah, that dude could definitely be champ. Like that striking was so accurate and just pinpoint it's part of, everything was perfect. That was part of the reason I was so high on Albert Tumanoff because I'm like, oh, Albert Tumanoff, like Albert Tumanoff is not in the top fifteen right now. He legitimately, like, he legitimately might be the best striker at welterweight. He was the guy who fought um Gunner and uh, um Leon Edwards, um, and who did he knock out? Lorenz Larkin. Yeah, I was gonna say the Larkin fight. Okay, that was him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he is really good. Like, yeah, if you can stand the feet with Larkin, who's like a crazy dynamic striker. Yeah, you're doing something good. Like he, <laughs> like he, I, I guess he might legitimately be the best striker at the, in the division. I was so high on him because I thought he could stop the wrestling. Turns out he's not as good as not good with the wrestling defenses. I was hoping, and that sucks. Because I think yeah, I think he matches up well with most of the top ten in terms of just strike chip striking. Yeah. I'm actually watching <laughs> uh Usman highlight reel now. Yeah, he, he, he beats uh at this point, unfortunately I think he beats Safadine. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, you never know. You never know. Crazier things crazier things have happened. People find ways to turn their life around and right right the ship, so to speak. But um, all right. So that was pretty much the main card. But there are definitely a few prelims uh, I, I want to mention, or uh, dive into a little bit also. Uh, Kevin Lee and Francisco Trinaldo. Um, mm. I'll be honest. I like like I've I've I, re- I don't remember many of his fights. Like they don't stand out that often. Mm-hmm. But like every time I watch Kevin Lee, he's he's definitely talented. But I didn't. You yeah, like you don't see it, you know. No, yeah, like I don't, I don't like people hype him, and I I look at him like he's good, you know. He, don't get me wrong. Isn't the perfect description of Kevin Lee is that I heard, that I saw on by um what's the dude's name, the Naked Gambler on Twitter. Mm. He he's like he's a meat and potatoes fighter who relies on like moments of just pure explosion to win fights. And I mean, I guess at 24, <laughs> I, I guess you can kind of get away with that. You, you've got youth and energy on your side, but yeah, and I, like yeah, he, he what he says is so true because like did nothing flashy or um extra incredible about Kevin Lee's game, but he's a really good athlete, and that will that carries him to moments where that and his like meat and potato style carries him to moments where being a good athlete manages to get him to somebody's back for a rear naked choke for example yep and like Trinado didn't yeah. look bad he didn't at all he did not look bad at all Trinado was in that rare class of just dirt in their 30s showing up in the UFC Brazilian lightweights who just come in and just wreck shop for like a few for a while like, and he actually doesn't he doesn't really get talked about. No, nah, because he's know. old. He's old and he throws like three different punches. Like there's nothing <laughs> you can do with that. <laughs> and like the thing is prior prior to this fight, dude, he he hasn't lost since two thousand and fourteen. <laughs> that was the Michael Chiesa. That's crazy. Yeah, like Trinaldo has quietly just been. I've been on the Trinaldo bandwagon since he beat uh, Norman Park. Yeah, he's he's been putting in work, dude. Man, he he yeah. um, his fight against Pearson, like that was just uh, that was um that was fucking amazing for me. He's thirty eight. That's crazy, dude. Trinaldo. You, you want to talk about the Neil Magnies and um fucking what was his name? God, we just talked about him, right? <laughs> yeah, Alex, who I can't remember Alex already. The heroes of the world, <laughs> who just get to the UFC and all of a sudden they're getting twenty thousand dollars every two or three months to go fight and train 
and spend all their time working in the gym. Francisco Ronaldo couldn't afford a bus pass before he got to the UFC, so he could only make it out to the gym like two to three times a week. Mm. Now he has a bus pass, and now he trains every day, and now he's really good. Right. So, like, th- that's the type of shit I love to hear. But I guess, man, props to Kevin Lee. Props to Kevin he Lee. Ended- he ended a really good streak <laughs> that Ronaldo had going on. I, I'm interested to see how Kevin Lee matches up like a top 15 guy, but uh, I'm struggling to think who I who I'm struggling to think. Yeah, who be, if you look, beats. so 10 through 15. Well, all right, Ronaldo was 11, so or is 11, so we can't count him. But 10 is Poirier, 12 is Melendez, 13 is Dunham, 14 is Aquinta. Will Brooks is 15. Maybe Melendez, because I think Melendez is slowing down a little bit, and he's kind of small for division. But even then, I, I, like, I think... Yeah, even that, I wouldn't feel comfortable, like, outright picking him. Yeah, like if it, it, it would be something like this, where Melendez is winning, and all of a sudden, we, like, transports to his back. Right. <laughs> and Dunham yeah. would be... Maybe he out, out, out athletes Dunham. But Dunham's, like, a solid dude. Yeah. So and he's like I he's like made of just iron. Yeah. Like he just he doesn't go away. So I don't know. Yeah. But I guess we'll see. We'll see how far his uh I mean he's still a young dude, only twenty four, yeah. so time is definitely on his side. Yeah. So yeah, he'll this, he'll be fine. This is this is this is still the same guy who got knocked out by Leonardo, Leonardo Santos. Who, by the way, has not gotten his top ten fight, despite having knocked out Kevin Lee in 2015. I'm very upset. Yeah, rankings are uh, rankings are unforgiving. <laughs> who who does the rankings for the UFC? Okay, so the U uh, the UFC uses a voting panel a panel of um uh, of just pe- uh, like journalists. They're not like actual um. They're not people from like Bloody Elbow and MMA fighting and like actual big MMA sites because the people from those sites refuse to uh, go to uh, like get under the UFC banner that way because they because um there's a lot of corruption with the rankings obviously yeah especially when they were especially because this, the rankings I think came out like a little bit before um. The uh, uh, the Reebok deal where they were still saying, hey, if you're a top, if you're ranked S X to Y, if you're ranked number fifteen, you get paid this much. If you're ranked number nine, you get paid this much. If you're ranked in the top five, you get paid this much. You know that type of thing. Yeah. So there was a lot of backlash from like the journalists from like Bloody Elbow and MMA Fighting and um, MMA Junkie. They're like, no, we don't want to do that. That's not fair. We're going to open ourselves up to like um. Bribery, I guess. So, you end up with guys like uh, Christopher Espin of MMA A N Y T T dot S E. Like, I'm trying to remember some of the dudes who they had on this freaking thing because it was batshit insane. Some of their rankings, <laughs> like uh, this dude doesn't have a number five heavyweight on the planet. Like that guy I just said, uh, Christopher Espin. Mm-hmm. Is Stephen Thompson at number fifteen in the pound per pound rankings? Uh, is Hector Sandoval is his number fourteen flyweight on the planet? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, Neil Magny is his number four welterweight. Like, Man. like the more I look at this, the crazier it gets. Gilbert Mullen is number seven at lightweight. Uh, Bobby Green, number eleven at lightweight. <laughs> Isn't Bobby Green? He lost his last, his last one or two. Yeah, he lost a bunch. Uh, it's not been pretty time to be Bobby Green. But it no, sucks because yeah. I like Bobby Green. Like he's doing good things for his community. Um, fucking what? Uh, is Vulcan Ozdemir at number five at light heavyweight? And Steve oh, Bosse at number 15. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Didn't Bosse get, like, his clock clean by who? Who was that? 
Yeah. Or did he knock somebody else? He's fought since he like that fight. I th- I know what you're talking. Uh, the uh, okay. the Santos fight. Uh, like yeah, because he got yeah, yeah boy. Yeah, that was... it, like his head kicked off. Yeah, that was that was rough. Uh, he beat Sean O'Connell. That's what he beat. Yeah, they had a yeah, they had like a slugfest pretty much. Like his his rankings are weird. Like, but that that's basically all the rankings like. A.M. New York, Scott Fontana, Scott Fontana. Like, I've never heard this motherfucker. I don't know who these people are. Actually, now that we're on the topic, I haven't mentioned, well, I haven't looked at Pound for Pound in a while, so I'm looking it up better now. So, Mighty Mouse 1, Connor 2, Cormier 3, Aldo 4, Garbrandt 5, Stipe 6, J-Check 7, <laughs> Woodley 8, who moved up a spot, Cruz 9, who went down a spot. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> no, 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 I'm looking at the rankings for this one dude. So this dude, Scott Fontana of AM New York, has Michael Chiesa at number five for his lightweights, Benil Darius number six, and then Edson Barboza at number nine. What? <laughs> he has Leonardo is... Santos at number 13, though. So. Hey, hey, and James right, there you go. Vick at number 15. Oh my god, he has freaking Connor and Nate ranked as number 12 and 13 at welterweight. <laughs> yeah, that's not... That's, that's... Ryan LaFleur at number 9. We can do better. <laughs> we, we can do better. Like, looking at how insane some of these rankings are, like, it's a wonder that they come out looking even moderately, like, legit. That's that's so disrespectful to Barboza. <laughs> Connor, he said Connor at thirteen, welterweight. Number twelve, Nate at number 12. thirteen. Oh god, I just, that's I don't even know. You know, don't... you don't even know how many times I've just like toyed with the idea of just putting my name into the thing. <laughs> they let, they let, if they let you um they let you submit your like website for uh rankings. Like if you want, you can just email them and be like, you can submit your website. I'm like, I have a blog. <laughs> I pay way more attention to any of these people. Wow. I guess real quick. <laughs> so I was time and always time the show, and my phone died. <laughs> so I, I don't know what time we're at. We were at 52 minutes when I last looked, but that was about like 10 minutes ago. But I wanted to make sure I gave a shout out to Joe Soto and uh, Ronnie Yaha. Oh yeah, that. For, uh, yeah, nice, a nice fun prelim fight. Nice uh, heavyweight fight at bantamweight. <laughs> right. Ronnie, I'm always happy to see Joe Soto stick around. Ronnie Yaha literally had to be carried to his corner by his corner men and after the second round but they were like no nope, you're good go back out there and win the fight <laughs> i mean yeah man from from the last couple times i've seen him fight man he came out just crazy aggressive like i don't remember him ever fighting like this before no nah. yeah his yeah, fights was... are always weird like you get the sense that the other guy is like afraid of him and it doesn't never make any sense <laughs> i mean yeah he Really, they they both were going for it, but Ronnie was going for the kill, man. He was, he was going for kill shots. Mm-hmm. Soto Soto stuck in there though, man. He, like I don't any, remember too much of this fight, but if any fight was probably affected by the um the drastic we- the the crazy weather, or the crazy heat, it was probably this one. Like Soto looked dead tired after the third. Yaya like gassed halfway through the second. Like. The power shots they were throwing halfway through the second round just looked fucking like, uh, like they were throwing in water. <laughs> but Soto lives to see another day. Yeah, like, I'm not going to lie, man. I, I was afraid that Soto wasn't going to last like long in the UFC because he had a little streak, man, where he, after the Dillashaw fight. Joe yeah. Soto is so obviously better than fighting on the regional circuit. Like, yeah, he's he was blowing dudes out there. He's so much better than that, but like he gets to the UFC and 
or he gets, or even in Bellator, he was just like struggling to put wins together after you lose. Like he lost the title to Joe Warren, went to Tachi, and lost again. And just like you could see it mentally get to him. And now he's on a three foot win streak. So all is good. Yeah. All is right. Yeah. He's uh he's putting it together. So yeah, hopefully we, we see some more of him. He's only twenty nine, um, by the way. Yeah. Tom is that does not feel right. On his set. Right, because I'm looking at his record. I didn't realize though he's been he's had a lot of fights. Oh uh, yeah, no, he's had twenty three fights in eleven years. Yeah, like he's he's been around a while. Wow, he beat Wilson Hayes. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know that. I mean, he and he's got a few. I mean, not like any champs or anything, but he's got a a few like names at least worth mentioning that he's beat, or at least you know have fought. So he's fought, you know, like, decent like a, competition. Yeah, so there's like a top fifteen talent. It's just that it's not always. He doesn't always show through. Yeah. But, yeah, hopefully he's uh, putting it together. Um, also, got to give shout-out to, you know, a little, little smaller MMA organizations that don't get all the, the press. Uh, Angela Lee. I think over they call them one... a smaller MMA organization. Apparently, they have, like, a billion households. <laughs> They're right. <laughs> <laughs> They're over there balling out of control. They're over there... <laughs> Apparently being worth a, mil- a billion dollars, but their athletes apparently can't afford uh, like steroids. So uh, go figure. Shout uh, out to Victor Key, Queen, Queen, Q, whatever your name is. Whoever, however... Well, I'll say I'll say smaller in terms of I guess I don't know notoriety. De- definitely not money though. They're, well, yeah, definitely. Uh, money. They're not worth yeah. four billion dollars. They can use the UFC, so whatever. Yeah, who knows. They're doing well for themselves, though. But shouts to uh, Angela Lee, uh, and also shouts to the people who faked her whatever weight test that One FC makes you go through. Because that <laughs> there is no way that girl is the same size as the girl she's fighting. Her fault. Yeah, so that was uh, Jenny, Jenny. W- uh, Wong. Yeah. No, that girl was t- teeny next to Angela Lee. It's really weird. Angelie's only twenty. She's twenty, and she's now six and zero. Oh, she made it to CNN. Mm-hmm. That's that's always a good look. Yeah, man, she's it's, she's a good talent though. She's man. a like, good talent. And she's a regional star there. Like, yeah, she's getting like, press, and she's and apparently they're paying her decent money. So props to her. She's only twenty years old. Yeah, I mean, she as far as I know, in one champion, she's. I, I guess you could probably argue she's their biggest. Possibly, I like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know the metrics for like any of their um, their fighters that fight like Indonesia or something like that, or, like or, what, another big country in that area, or like Malaysia or whatever. Like, I don't know the metrics on how many people tune in from there, but it, as uh, as their main market, Singapore, she's probably their biggest star. Yeah, and I mean, and it's deserved. I mean, she's she's definitely her grappling skills are pretty. They're pretty wild, man. She's oh, no. she's really yeah. good on the ground. Dude. Striking, striking slowly coming along also. Dude, if you can From... if you can hit a triangle in like your what second, third, fourth fight, you deserve all the praise you can get. Yeah, and she's and we mentioned it last time. I, got... I said triangle. I meant twister. God, twister. Yeah, her fight with May Yama uh, Yamaguchi or Uchi. Sorry if I'm butchering the name. I, I know we mentioned it last show. That awesome fight. That everyone should go watch. Fight of the year for 2016 for fights that were in the UFC. Right. Because nothing's going to top Condit Lawler. Sorry, no. everybody. <laughs> oh, man. So I Google Angela Lee, and in the right hand of my screen, I get a mention of Mr. Ben Askren. Hey. Well, I'm just now realizing I have not heard from him in a very long time. He's on his retirement deal, buddy. Is he? When is the last time he fought? He beat. Um. Well, he was supposed to fight. What's his face? The uh, Santos again? Yes. And then Santos came in drastically overweight, and then the fight got canceled. He was very upset because he wasted like half a year of his life. I mean, Askren's thirty. He's thirty-two. Oh, he fought. Not... He fought in April, like last year. 
Dude has fought twice in the past two years. Man. That's not good. Yeah, and then, like, I'm, I was never a huge Askren fan, but I can't deny, like, he beat everybody they put in front of him. So, like, I always want to see dudes it's like him that, be able to... It's not even just that he beat everybody in front of him just, like, lopsidedly. Right, like... Except J. J. <laughs> which is weird. <laughs> Out of all the names that he beat, that's the one guy who, like, who gave him trouble. Yeah. But then he goes on to, like, obliterate Douglas Lima and Korshkov. And... <laughs> like, I don't know what one's doing with him. Like, they signed him to this big six-figure deal, and now they're, he's fought for them four times. Yeah, four times, and he's been there since 2014. That's not... <sighs> yeah, that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. And, he, and yeah, I haven't seen anything about him fighting this year, so... I haven't heard his name like up until I just saw him on the screen. I don't even I can't even remember the last time I've heard his name be mentioned. Like I, right. I want to say, you know, what? I want to say, um, I heard last time I heard his name was like for Aegon Wrestling, like that Metamorphs type deal he does for like mm-hmm. amateur wrestling, where he'll bring in some um, like some Olympic team members and have them go up against um, MMA fighters who used to be like wrestlers or other Olympic team wrestlers or even international wrestlers sometimes. Like, who was it? Tony Ramos Ramos versus um, Henry Sudo. That was one of the ones they had last year. Mm. Um, God, what were some of the other ones? He, he, he's competing them himself. It was like Ben Askren versus like Quentin Miller. Quentin Richardson. Something like that. A former... Um, he moved, so basically, Askren moved up two weight classes to wrestle somebody who won a weight, uh, who won um, an NCAA title at 197, and he beat the shit out of him. <laughs> like he racked up so many points on him, it wasn't even funny. Man. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, Askren, it might not be the most fun to watch, but he, he just ragdolls people, man. Dude, I, he, he sh- dude, I enjoy the shit out watching Askren ragdoll people. Like, right. uh, I remember the course cough pin. fight. Like, <laughs> dude, he outstruck uh, Kors, Korshkov something like two hundred and fifty-four to three. Right, and like Korshkov's a big one seventy, like a big athletic dude, and Askren just completely shut him down. In all fairness, just... Korshkov also admitted I didn't train any wrestling for this fight, <laughs> <laughs> which is not a good. Uh, it's not a good. Uh, yeah, that's not a good idea. Yeah, it's dumb. Sorry. Do you, do you think? I mean, probably. I don't know. You think there's still any chance he makes it to the UFC, or is uh, that window closed? Askren seems pretty sad in his ways. He's getting paid six figures to go fight once a year. He's on his retirement deal, according to him, where you know he's go, he's set. He probably has all the business connections he could ask for now that he works for. He's probably going to have like a deal with one at one point, for, at like when he's done. Mm. Like, I, like I don't know what that uh, the relationship is between him and one actually. I shouldn't say that. But I can see like Rich Franklin looking out for him. Yeah, I, I hope he doesn't. Cause then if you know if he just kind of slowly fades out, he'll be one of those guys that we look at and just be like, what if? Like, what if he made it? I, I'm already, already see, like, I'm already could've... saying that because he's like he's what 33, 34 now. Thirty. Oh, well, according to Sherdog, he's thirty two. Yeah, but and by the time he's done with his contract, he's gonna be like thirty six, right? So like, I would I would have loved to see um, Baskin versus Maya, Baskin versus GSP, but I guess this is one of those fights we're just never those are just fights we're never gonna get. So it is uh-huh. what it is. Yeah, life uh, <laughs> life goes on. I guess last shout out. <clears throat> if you have any other pardon uh, pardon shots, uh, shout out to Mackenzie Dern who won her last fight, which I can't remember when it happened because I didn't watch it. Friday. She is now... Last Friday. Friday. On... Oh, my God. I still haven't watched any... They're called LFA now, right? Yes. Still haven't caught any of their cards. They always happen, like, really late, and I have to work the next morning. But Same. Shout out to her. She's 3-0 and now. Uh, Only 1-0 at 115, though, so... Bellator, open that page... Uh, like, open your page... Like, open your checkbook. She might not be able to make 115. <laughs> but, yeah, regardless of where 
her weight falls, I guess she's still someone to keep an eye on. She's getting a lot of a lot of hype. And she's continuing, I guess, to impress, even though I miss all of her fights. But um, I still give apparently her Apparently this fight wasn't all that impressive from her. Like she oh. won, but like it, it wasn't anything to toot the horn about. Like her her opponent was kinda like I I remember watching like a little bit of the highlights. Her opponent was kinda like just gooning on her a little bit. Like she was dancing. Like she was very upset with her because she wouldn't like engage with her. And it, it looked like it was a little bit of a slot fest. Yeah. I mean, those fights happen, though. Yeah. Yeah, they, they happen. But, yeah, so, shout-outs to her. Um, yeah, not not much else in the MMA world going on. I mean, we got uh, Corey Anderson and Manua uh, coming that's up. That's a good card. I'm going to say that. Like, matchup-wise, it's a really good card. Sucks that they couldn't find a real main event. Which is a sorry thing to say because four years ago, if we had the number four light heavyweight, and the number like what nine or ten light heavyweight face off, it probably would have been a big deal. Right. Like, but, and but now, it's just... like, now it's just oh, this guy lost to old man Shogun, and this guy lost to the two elite fighters he got to fight. And they're not bad right. fighters, by the way. Not at all, Manua. I mean, I I don't give him too much flack for the Rumble loss. I mean. Most people not named Cormier <laughs> are probably going to lose the Rumble. And aside from that fight, he, he pretty much knocks people out. And that Gustafson unconscious. fight. Oh, yeah. For, yeah, I forgot about that. So, yeah. it was, uh, that's the thing, though. Like, if he was younger, like, there'd probably be some more excitement around it, like, around him. He goes, oh, he yeah. fought these two guys, but he was really early in his career, and he's really young, so he'll get better. And, like, no, he's 37. Nah. But he's still got power. So if anything, he's a, he'll be good for a knockout. Yep. And you know his division's full of people who are not very good strikers, so you should be yeah. really putting on a lot of people. <laughs> but like this, yeah, then, uh, Gunnar Nelson, Alan Joe Ben, that's a fun fight. Makwan uh, Amerikani, Mr. Finland himself versus Arnold Allen, that's a good fight. Mad Dog, Reza Madadi, Joe Duffy, um, Tom, oh, this is Brad Pickett's retirement fight, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Brad Pickett's retirement fight against Marlon Vera, who just seems to be that dude who pops up every few months to take a replacement fight. <laughs> He's out here trying to put money away so his daughter can smile people. So support him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a couple of... And then you got Mark D. Casey, Tom Breeze, Leon, uh, Leon Edwards with Vincent, uh, Vincente Luque. That's a great fight. That's a main car fight. I don't know why it's not on the main card. I mean, I do know why it's not on the main card, but still, like that's a car. If this was a six fight main, uh, this was a six fight fight card, because this one's going to be all on fight pass. So that, but if this was on FS1, Luke versus Edwards deserved to be on the top six. It's a great fight. And my man Oluwale Bombus. Bombus. <laughs> so. Yeah, we got some some fights coming oh, up. Also, uh, World Series of Fighting is actually oh. a really good card. Just like, yeah. Cut. Oh, look at them shout outs. Uh, we got Ivanov and Sean Jordan going for the heavyweight strap. Lance Palmer. Lance Palmer and Andre Harrison. That should be a pretty good one. And uh, Khabib's bro. I forgot. Is he older or little? Or younger. younger. Okay. Uh, back. Uh, Bek Bulat, Michael Medov versus Donovan Frilo is a good fight. On the prelims, um, Hakeem Dawad, who is, in my opinion, probably the best prospect in WSOF, uh, Muay Thai fighter of uh, fuck uh, Canada. And he's fighting former UFC fighter Steven Styler, so that's a really good. That's a prelim. That's a prelim. It's a really good fight. Though. That's crazy. I would think that they would make that a main. Uh, they have three title fights on the main card. That's probably why. Okay, all right, yeah. All right, yeah, and, not a lot of space. Yeah, and plus one of them, and then, you know, you're going to go with Dewadu or you're going to go with Khabib Nurmagomedov's brother. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, they, hopefully Team Nurmagomedov doesn't get in a fucking fight again. <laughs> just like the, the Diaz brothers show up out of nowhere and just, they start wailing on one another again. Hey, that'll get ratings up. <laughs> <laughs> just give you something just to some promo. Vo- this is like a high school volleyball team game going on in the background. They have to cancel <laughs> it because he's like Russian freaking mobster looking motherfuckers, and just the Diaz's are just throwing their hands. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
I mean, I don't want anybody to get hurt, but if a little scrap breaks out, it's a little entertainment. Nothing, nothing wrong with a little entertainment. And also, don't, don't take uh, it too far. Also, I guess shout outs to um, boxing because Gennady Golovkin, da- Danny Jacobs, those are the types of fights boxing fans want to see. And we're finally going to get to see them, even if it's for like 60 bucks on pay per view. Plus, that, that, yes, and that card has Roman Gonzalez and. Um, what the hell is this guy's name? Because I, I can't I can't do Thai names. Uh, <laughs> Wisak uh, Wisaksil uh, Wangik. I'm not saying it again. That's his name. So that both those fights on the main card of that uh, that pay per view. So that should be fun. If you're in yeah. boxing's been making some noise, dude. Man. It's been a great year if you're a boxing fan. Yeah, and it's only getting better right now because what um God. Yeah, April. We got Klitschko, Anthony Joshua. Uh, what else coming down the pipe? Just a whole bunch of good shit. Good shit. Everybody should be paying attention. Yeah, 2017 has been dope mm-hmm. so far. Uh, dude, Jason Souza and Vasil Lomachenko. There we go. That's the shit. So we got we got a lot, a lot coming. So the show might get quiet after next week. <clears throat> Um, I'm pretty sure neither one of us is going to rush to cover uh, the King Mo <laughs> and, and Rampage rematch. Uh, I mean, but, I could sit up here and rant for an hour about how I hate it. Because <laughs> it's just the but type I of mean, person I am. <laughs> I'm debating if I want to watch that fight or not. Uh, but, I mean, there's an Invicta fight card on the 25th. Okay. I don't know what you so we might be able to squeeze in some some more uh, some more fight shows. I'm, I'm pretty sure between now and whenever more fights happen. April. MMA is a, a crazy place. Things happen a lot during the week. So, Dude, both are just slapping us across the face left and right. Like, straight up dick slapping us. Because they, <laughs> they got 175 with the second worst fight that has ever happened in Bellator history. And then they got 176 with the worst fight that's ever happened in Bellator history. <laughs> Hold on, what's 176? Carvalho and Maynouf. Oh, no. Again. <laughs> We're running it back. Mm, dude, like They, they booked this fight twice. They booked this fight twice. They know what they were doing. They were like, fuck you, people. You don't like it? You, <laughs> you, you eat shit. You're going to have it again. God. All right, so maybe we'll... uh. <laughs> We will we'll squeeze in some other shows and talk about some of these potential catastrophes that are probably gonna. The next podcast is why does Scott Coker hate us so much? <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> so yeah, be on the lookout for those. I'll also probably have a few uh, solo podcasts coming. I've uh, got some some music I've been listening to. I got to give albums a few more listens though before I talk about them. So. Uh yeah, be on the lookout. There'll there'll be there'll be content. It'll it'll be coming. So like, share, uh, repost, do all that that good stuff. Reblog. Uh, that people, yeah, reblog that all the internet people do. Um, so I don't know how long we've been talking now. I'm gonna guess it's been well over an hour. Probably. Uh yeah. <laughs> so I guess I'm gonna go shovel this little bit of snow. <laughs> that is uh, around my tires and yeah chill out on this snow day and enjoy the the elements um this has been another episode of the dojo talk podcast and oh i didn't do the tagline man i'm, I'm messing up man i didn't mention people getting punched and kicked in the face yeah we'll be there no nah, i don't want to say it well, yeah. yeah whenever people get kicked punched in the face we'll be there i messed that all up but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I completely ruined that <laughs> I gotta start like writing that down to remember to say that but yeah man whenever people are getting kicked and punched in the face we will be there to talk about it uh, hopefully we catch you guys soon and until then peace out <laughs>